So, so uh, there are certain consequences from of uh, um, the recognition of human dignity, uh, and I want to try to articulate some of these. Uh, uh, it's their human dignity, I believe, is there in all the great religious traditions and their scriptures and so on. But it's implicit, largely implicit there. That it isn't that they formulate a separate concept of human dignity. Uh, but uh, uh, it becomes explicit in the modern world since the Renaissance. Uh, people uh, begin to say uh, that there's something about a human being that needs to be recognized and respected. And that recognition and respect, respect of human dignity is what we mean by human rights, right? Human rights, uh, and this is explicit in, in many of the documents that have been developed over the last couple of centuries with regarding human dignity and human rights. Uh, so this, uh, for example, this is there in the UN Universal Declaration. If we could have the next slide, please. And, uh, the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, which as we know is, is a list of 30 different rights articulated in 1948, uh, uh, formally uh, recognized on December 10th, which is now Human Rights Day, 1948, uh, led by a group of people from around the world who worked together to to articulate this list of human rights and the preamble the preamble in article one uh, uh, give exactly what i'm trying to get at here preamble says recognition of the inherent dignity and of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is the foundation of freedom justice and peace in the world in the recognition of inherent dignity Right, uh, and out of this um, comes uh, 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 human rights. And then Article One repeats that. Right, Article One of Thirty wants to insist on this idea. So, Article One says all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience, and should act towards one another in the spirit of brotherhood. Reason and conscience. Right. Uh, Immanuel Kant in the 18th century emphasized this as the source of human dignity. Reason and conscience, conscience, Kant said, give us the fundamental imperative of morality, which is to treat every person as an end in themselves and never merely as a means. Right. So if people, Kant said, if people are treated as an end in themselves, that means that they, they have dignity. Right, to, you can treat things as a means. You can use things. Things, he said, only have price. They do not have dignity. But a human being who has reason and conscience, that is part of the self-transcendence capacity that I was referring to before, human beings who have this uh, have an intrinsic value, intrinsic worth that must be recognized. Next, next slide, please. So, so uh, the this intrinsic dignity that we have uh, links us the, the very fact that we're conscious of the world and that we have this self-transcending capacity that I've been talking about before. We move from a past which we judge to be inadequate through a dynamic present toward a utopian horizon that is inevitably projected out of the present uh, capacity for self-transcendence and self -ju and judgment. I judge the past to be inadequate. I judge the world to be a place of violence and war and, and disharmony. And, and in, that in that very judgment, I generate a utopian horizon, realizing that it does not have to be like this, right? So we're connected 
in this way with the whole dynamism of the universe, the dynamism uh, that 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 means that we are in some sense microcosms, right? Microcosms of a of of the fundamental principle of the universe, sometimes called the Tao, the Buddha principle, the Atman, the Holy Spirit, or the image of God. 